All right, welcome back. So we're gonna look at some string manipulation. So we'll do some search and replace, work with regular expressions. Um, so here I'm gonna be using the regex crate here. Crate provides a library for parsing, compiling, and executing regular expressions. So it does use a Perl synta style syntax for regular expressions, but it doesn't include things like lookarounds and back references. Right, so uh, you can see here it also does, because it's the Perl style, right, regular expressions, it does support named captures, right? So here you've got, these are indexed, right, 4, 2, 2, okay, but then you've got, these are the capture groups, and then you've got name capture groups here, where you've got the year, month, right, day are being captured, and then I'm using dollar sign $M. Etc. right there. So this is a great utility, great crate to use. Uh, another thing that you'll want to look at is, so on Rust by example here, you have strings, right? So in Rust you have the string type here, and then you have a, what's called a string slice. And so string is stored as a vector of bytes but guaranteed to always be valid UTF-8. String is heap allocated, growable, and not null terminated. String slice always points to a valid UTF sequence we can use to view into a string, right? The difference here is usually the string slice here is uh, usually pointed to somewhere directly in the binary. So hence the name slice. So it's a it's guaranteed because it's pointing to a specific block of memory, right? So here, Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog here is a string. It's embedded within the binary. So this string slice is going to point to whatever the offset is in the binary for this particular string, right? So um, a couple of common like things that you'll want to work with for string manipulation are going to be things like, uh, where do we have this? So here, let's just go in here. So you've got splitting, right? So this is going to be on the string. Um, this is on the reference type for string, right? So if we go up here, right? So standard struct string, right? You can create it from a literal string right here. Uh, but let's look at like split off. This is a nice one to use if you need to like. So it'll return a newly allocated string, and give it an index, right? So split off the original value is going to be mutated, and then it'll provide you a, another value, another variable there. So uh, another one I like to use is a uh, replace range. So given an given a range, which would be a zero to some value or between two index points. Uh, you can replace it with some other string slice variable. Removing, right? So this is just removing it at a particular byte pos uh, position. The, um, the key thing to hear is that, right, so the, the remove is going to be a big O in operation as it requires copying every element in the buffer. Um, you have push, which is nice. So if you want to augment uh, an existing string, right, you can call push, which will pin a character, but then you can also push a, an entire string. This only works on the uh, string, not the string slice. Inserting, right, so if you want to insert at a particular position, same thing with insert string. Again, that's going to be big, big O N. A lot of these like big O N operations here, where it's where it has to either copy every element from the buffer, or let's say it needs to uh, consume it in some way. If you have an iterator, there is an alternative data structure actually known as a rope, right? So let's look at that real quick. Uh, so a rope data structure involves uh, building the string in such a way where it's in a uh, chunked, right? So you can see here, like, hello, my name is Simon. Each part of the branch is chunked by a certain weight. And what that allows you to do is kind of manipulate it at a node level, 
right? Inserting, et cetera. And then it gives you, let's say, um, right, big old login. If it doesn't need to rebalance, uh, deletion, login, right? So this is a this is commonly used for like text editors, things like that. There's a package create called Ropey, which is nice. So you can see here you're manipulating at a specific line, um, line to character, removing at a specific index, inserting an index. So this is a great one to look at if you want to look at that something like that. Um, yeah, so that's it for those. Uh, another package we're going to use here is glob, right? So if you need to get a list of files using the glob syntax, uh, just use it like this. So glob, and that'll give us a number of entries. And we're just going to create a small little uh, search and replace utility, right? So if you need to get arguments, use standard in args. And we're going to make those affect DQ. First argument in the environment is always going to be the uh, binary that was executed, the path of the binary. So, let's. So, I'm just grabbing the pattern, grabbing whatever it was replaced with. And then here I want to use a buffer reader, right? So this is going to be helpful for us if we want to read from, let's say, standard in. All right, and the alternative here is so this is going to be right. You'll do say like cargo run pattern, replace, and then maybe do like cat. So that's going to be a pipe or an echo. So this is going to be of type T because we're going to have to handle the standard in or a file. So anything that has a uh, that has the trait for standard IO read. All right, now we can start using our regular expressions here. Right, so I'll use it from the regex crate. Get a pattern. And then start reading each line. Right. Some lines. Oh, and remember, so commonly when you have this issue where you're not, the function's not showing up, right? If you get a little hint here, make sure the insert uh, include the trait, right? So in this case, I included standard IO buff read. All right, now we can just print out the replacement. So we're just going to use a simple replace all. Uh, non-overlapping matches in the text. Right. And then replace with. Okay. And then what do we got here? Out oh, file, right? Make sure you import from standard F. Um, also doing this short circuit, short circuit, uh, shortcut right here. So if you get an error, that operator can only be used in a function that returns a result or an option. 
right? So you do need to modify main here so that it returns some kind of result. And I'm just going to do a simple OK entry. Uh, one of the recent changes to the recent release of Rust is now you can do termination. Um, right, exit status. So I believe that now works. The recent version. Yeah, anyway, so that's something you can do if you want to do it that way. I have not done it that way yet, so. All right, so now that we have that going, you can go ahead and run some kind of pattern here. So I would expect, like, so let's see, we have our cargo.coml here. So we can actually pipe that into cargo run. And then we're going to. I don't know, replace uh let's see, maybe we could replace something like this, right? So you see here the I got an unwrap on that none. Twenty-five, right? Oh, we don't have a path. Oh, we've already done at this point, right? So and actually this should could be right. Okay, so you notice here I did a capture group A through Z equals some other capture group and then I'm replacing it with dollar sign one equals uh one dot zero dot zero. So you can see every version here was changed. Um I could have uh, changed it. So let's say we do this again, right? And instead of having it like that, maybe I do, if we go back to our regex here, name capture groups, right? Something like that. We say P, call us name. Oops. And then instead of one, we say name, right? Same thing. Uh, and then we could do it this way too, right? So we can say name cargo.toml. Same thing. And actually, in this case, cargo.toml is the second one. Oh, I must have copied that incorrectly. I did. Yes. Right, it's this one. There we go. And then we can say cargo.toml. Alright. That's it. Um, there's a bunch of other ways we can kind of manipulate this. So uh, you got to replace all for that type of situation. But let's say you wanted to iterate on the capture locations. So actually get out the capture groups. So let's say captures. Right. So if you're looking at, let's say, you have this pattern here, it's captures, you can iterate over each of those. So if we look at, if we go back to our example here, instead of doing a replace all, let's say we did, right, captures. And we'll just print those out just so you can see. So you can see here, it's got some capture, here's zero, and this is the uh, capture that it found, and then it converts it into a parameter, right? Same thing with all these. So that's really handy when you have that. Uh, another good one that you might, might want to look at is say like, 
uh, possibly a uh, find right example. So right, so that'll be a match matches. To say so if you want to look at each of the matches right that'll give you a uh, a range as well so that's a handy one to have uh, if you need to replace a specific range. So here you can see, here's the glob, and then it starts at 0, 14, right? So 0 to 14, 0 to 15. Um, so that's a handy one to have. That way you can do, let's say, like, uh, you'll do, say, like, replace range, right? So as soon as you have that range, you can just say dot range, right? So that's nice. Uh, another one you want to look at is like L dot, so this is on the string, replace N, right? So it'll replace the first N matches of a pattern of another string. Um, that's a good one to have. If you need to, let's say, replace it at a specific, like maybe the, the second, only the second instance of a particular item, then what you want to do for that would be you take the match that you're looking at and then you would say L dot split off, right? And you give it an index, right? Which will give you the postfix and then you can just say postfix dot replace which will do the first, so that's repl uh, that one, but you'll want to say uh, it'll be reg.replace, right? So this one will replace the leftmost first match with a replacement provided. So if you want to do something like that, you split off the string at the index, and then you'll replace it at the first match, which will give you a way to replace it at the, the uh, a particular, like in said, for instance, you can like replace it at a specific index. And say, I want to replace the second time, only the second instance of this uh, variable, right? So that's something you can do with that like that. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of just a brief overview of the uh, of those crates, libraries, a little bit of string manipulation. Um, hope this was helpful. And yeah, uh, definitely give us a like and a subscribe if you can. And I'll see y'all in the next one. <laughs>